Hey guys, Quentin Tackett on Sonic and OK KO for 2020 here. Welcome to part 9 of the 2020 edition of Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. And um, by the way, this is part number 5 of the 1400 subscriber special. Of course, um, this is where we're going to end the 1400 subscriber special. So, um, yeah, this is the final part of the 1400 subscriber special. So anyway, let's just, let's go log in. Alright, let's wait for the welcome screen to show up. And... Alright, and um, I know I don't get shown sometimes, I, mean, I know I'm shown, but anyway, um, as you can see, I am wearing my OKKO OK Let's Be Hero shirt, you know, the new one I started wearing. So yeah, this is a really cool thing, but anyway, um, we're finally here at the desktop, we're now going to go into the My Computer part of the computer, so, alright. By the way, in the previous part of the walkthrough, which was part 8. Yeah, I did part 8 like two days ago. Part 8 included the the, the Microsoft Money 2004 tutorials on creating an investment account. And of course, balancing an account to a paper statement. So anyway, um, for this part, we're going to take a look at the next two tutorials. Which, um, they will be on uh, <clears throat> entering an investment transaction and reducing your debt. So, um, let's just hope this computer does not waste any time. So, let's just get it up. While we're at it, we're going to turn the light off to get things ready. Alright. Alright, now we're going to click on local C drive I hope this doesn't waste any time because I've got a video to do I know I'm doing this in the dark but um just like what I did at the XP tour in the of like a, a in the previous parts ago I think like probably like around parts one and two I think that's when I did the XP tour I don't know Well, um, well, that's going to take some time. That's going to take a lot of time. Program files. Speakers. Keyboard. Mouse. Is it going to open up the program files? Come on, baby. I think I hear it. I think we're going into the program files. Microsoft Money. And um, then we're going to go into Media. AV Help. This is going to take a little long. I hope we can get that though. Did I click on AV help? I think I did. What am I sitting on? Did someone just fall off? Oh. That was just something. Okay. Well, anyway, um... Let's see, um... Is it gonna get there yet? I wonder where it is. Speakers are waiting. You know what? Let's just wait for me. Okay, you're back at it again, and um, I finally got it all open now. So um, we're going to start off by taking a look at the entering an investment transaction tutorial. So let's just take a look at it. Here goes nothing. We've already set up that investment account for our broker, Ferguson and Bardell. 
I think it's time we enter the stocks that we've bought and sold. That'll bring the value of our investment account and money up to date, won't it? Right. And recording each investment transaction can also help us calculate our capital gains for taxes at the end of the year. Okay. Let's start with our first purchase here. Ten shares of Parnell Aerospace. We'll go to our money portfolio and add the new investment. Good. Here's another money wizard to walk us through each step. We choose our investment account from the list. Now the stock. Since this is a new stock for us, it's not in our list yet. I'll just type it in. What type of investment is it? Well, it's a stock. What's the symbol on the statement? It's P R N L. But if we didn't know what it was, we could click Find Symbol, and money quickly searches the internet to find it. Here's where we fill in the buy details. We can take it right off the statement. Money offers two ways to track our stocks. If we just want to track the number of shares, we can fill in the quantity here. But since we want money to track our investment performance as well as capital gains and losses for our taxes, we'll enter the date and price details too. So now we're finished adding the investment transaction. And see, it's now listed in our portfolio. So money calculated the total. Of course, this shows us quantities, market value. And the gains and losses on our holdings. If we want to review transactions for this stock, we just click its name. We can get even more information here. Oh, let's look at the price history. This is great information. Where does it come from? From the internet. We're set up to connect to the web and update the investment information each time we open money. But we can update it any time we're working in money, as long as we're connected to the internet. First, we click Update Price Online. Money goes to the web and retrieves the latest prices for all the investments in our file. That'll keep our portfolio current and accurate. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next tutorial, which is on reducing our debt. So let's take a look at it. I can't believe how deep we've gotten into debt. How did this happen? <sighs> It's really crept up over the past few years, and now with our new car payment, it seems like we never have any cash left after we pay the bills. What's worse is that we're paying Dude, so much more in interest do that. than things actually cost. You know, money has that debt reduction plan. You don't cut、oh, your credit、right. card like that. Apparently, we choose the debts we want to pay off. All of them. And it creates a plan for us to pay them off. On the planner menu, we click Debt Reduction Planner. Look, the debt accounts we've set up in money to pay our bills are already listed. So we don't have to set them up again. All we have to do is pick the ones we want in our debt reduction plan and move them in. Makes it relatively painless, then, doesn't it? So far, but if we had a debt that wasn't listed here, we could just add it by clicking New Account and following the steps. So you've picked our two credit cards for the plan, and now the car loan. That makes sense. But what about our mortgage? That's a debt too. The credit cards have a high interest rate, and as you know, we've racked up those balances. The car loan has a pretty high balance too, although it's at a moderate interest rate. It makes sense for us to pay that off more quickly too. But the mortgage has a relatively low interest rate. We can earn more on investments than we can trying to pay our mortgage off early. Got it. What about this card? It's a charge card. We pay off the balance every month. So there's no debt there for us to reduce. Oh, that's right. Now that we've decided which accounts we want to pay off, we need to decide on our payment plan. One way is to plan it by the amount we want to pay each month. This shows us the minimum amount we need to pay each month. Looks like it's the total of all of our minimum payments. We'll need to do a lot better than this to get ahead. We could start、oh. by applying the raise that I'm getting next month. Great. Also, when we did our budget, money said we'd have more than a hundred dollars extra each month. We could apply that to our debt. We can also plan our debt payments by the date we want to be out of debt. <laughs> we'd better be out of debt before we retire. Really? Why? I was hoping we could be out of debt before we need to start making Carolyn's college payments. I like your original idea. Let's be realistic and work with what we have. We'll apply the extra one hundred dollars we have toward our debt each month. When you get your raise, we'll revise our plan to include that too. We can get ahead faster if we apply any windfalls we get to the debt as well. How about our tax refund? Great idea. We'll be getting three hundred dollars back. Okay, I'm putting it in our plan. That makes our out of debt date even sooner. 
Is our plan ready? Here it is. Money takes our highest interest rate debt first, which is this one, and schedules us to pay it off first. And all the while we're making minimum payments to the others. When the first one's paid off, money will schedule us to apply the big payments to the debt with the next highest interest rate. And so on and so on, until we're debt free. That'll be cause for celebration. Now, we select these check boxes to confirm that we want to work with this plan. Right. Then money will remind us to make the debt payment at the amount we've set up here. It works just like money's reminders for paying any other bill. Say, what if we want to change our plan midway? Maybe we need to add a new loan. Or better yet, add to the amount we want to pay each month. We just open the debt reduction plan again and make any changes we want. Fantastic. We can keep whittling away at our debt to make our money work best for us. All right. But we're not going to go just yet. First, we have to take a look at one more tutorial for for, 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 tech, for catching up. So we're going to be taking a look at the tutorial for categorizing transactions. Here we go. Amy, I'm learning more about entering transactions in Microsoft Money. But what should I put under category? Can I just leave it blank? You can, but then you're not taking advantage of some of the benefits money can provide. With categories, we can track our income and expenses, so we'll know where all our money's going. Using categories will also help us at tax time and when we budget. So this is where I tell money what the transaction was for? Right. There are two ways you can see categories and subcategories. What do you mean? Well, you can see them this way, with the category and subcategory together. Or you can see them this way, with the category in one box and the subcategory in the other. Oh, I see. How do you switch between the two? You just go to Tools, Options, Categories. Uh-huh. And select uh -huh. or clear this second checkbox. I think I can figure out what to do next. This check was for food. food. And the subcategory would be groceries. Groceries. Right. And look, as soon as we press Enter, money lets us know how we're doing on the spending limits we set up for food. So we can see whether we're spending more or less than we planned for this category. Okay, here's another way to do it. For the next transaction, type in the category. Okay, automobile. A U. Hey, it filled in the rest for me. Tricky, huh? Now that. Now type a colon and then the subcategory. How about gasoline? It filled it in again. Yay! Yep. Now the next one is for our monthly house cleaning bill. Since this is a recurring monthly bill, let's categorize it under bills. And even though house cleaning is not on the list of oh, standard subcategories, we can add it ourselves. This means we can customize the categories for anything we need. Now you just press enter. And money helps me create the new category. This wizard makes it easy. Let's check it out. Your new subcategory got added to the list already. This is great. Not only are money's categories easy to use, but we can create reports with them and analyze our taxes and budget. This will really help us see what's going on with our personal finances. All right, that's going to conclude part number nine of the 2020 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Coming up on part 10, which will be the next part, we'll take a look at the next, the last few tutorials will be on work with backup files and banking online with money. So anyway, um, it's now time for us to turn off the computer, so let's close that. Start menu, turn off computer, and we will click the turn off button. All right, get the computer turned back on. All right, so yep, yeah, that's about it for part nine of the 2020 edition of the walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. Stay tuned next time for part 10 where I will like take a look at the last two Microsoft Mind tutorials which will be on working with backup files and banking online with money. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OKKO OK for next 2020 signing off. Peace out.